So what we're going to be reporting on today, the UK theme park season has ended and now we're going to be reviewing all the new additions, the trips here on the channel and an overall summary of the 2019 theme park season right here in the UK. Hello there guys, my name is Coach Shadong Stubborn, but built for Theme Park News and welcome to a Theme Park Newsroom, well, Theme Park Season review from um, the UK Theme Park Season. The 2019 Theme Park Season is over, uh, the 2019 season is done, all the fireworks events have finished. Uh, as I'm recording this, however, Alton Towers has still got a couple of nights of fireworks to do, but as you're watching this, the Theme Park Season is pretty much over. Obviously, Christmas events and stuff like that will be running. Uh, and I may do another video uh, in the future, sort of going through what different Christmas events are going to be on for you guys' enjoyment. So make sure you stay tuned for a video on that uh, in a couple of weeks. So, of course, we are getting close to December. Uh, now, one massive thing about this video is the trips that we did on the channel. And we were talking about that in a little bit. We we're starting off with the new investments uh, in the UK theme parks for 2019. Uh, the last year of the 2010s decade, uh, running from 2010 to 2019, uh, the last year of the decade before we go into a brand new decade. Uh, so I am planning on doing um, like the last decade of Alton Towers Resort because um, that's one of the main UK theme parks. So I might and I, I might do the same with Thorpe Park and Chessington and Poulton's because uh, Poulton's has undergone, in my personal opinion, the most dramatic changes of that decade. Um, so I may do some last, uh, la the last 10 years of, and then some UK parks. I might do them with other parks as well. Um, but the main ones is Alton Towers, Thorpe Park, Chessington and Poulton's. And they're going to be going on sort of around the end of December. So um, that should be pretty cool once it's uploaded. But this video is all about the UK theme park season and at the end of the theme park season. We're in the well, we're pretty much over, uh, apart from those Christmas events like I told you about. Uh, but we're going to start off this video talking about the new additions that were opened at the theme parks this year. So the only one of the new additions I've managed to do so far, in well, the only managed, the only one I've managed to do in its opening year, uh, but the only one so far is of course Alton Towers. Now of course Alton Towers introduced some very uh, a, a varied amount of stuff uh, this year. Obviously next year is a different story with the world of David Williams. Obviously we'll get more details on that in the new year. Uh, but 2019 was a big year for Alton Towers and specifically for the Charlie the Chocolate Factory building because that became the Alton Towers dungeon and you guys know my thoughts on the Alton Towers dungeon. I thought it was a fantastic experience. Uh, full of great acting quality, brilliant effects, great shows. They use the boat ride really well. My only sort of constructive criticism with the dungeon is there was too many like blank spots in the actual boat ride system. Uh, I can see where blank spots fit because of the whole sewer system. You're sort of riding down the sewer in a boat. Uh, but I think there was too many blank spots. Uh, so maybe next see over the close season maybe sort of fill some of them blank spots with some theming or some uh mood lighting just to sort of give you the feeling of being in a sewer uh just that a little bit more uh, but apart from that i don't have any negatives with that experience i think it's really really cool i think that the blank spot sort of thing with the boat ride is the kind of constructive criticism that many people have with the dungeon when it first opened um so I think just fix a couple of those blank spots that need to be fixed and then you've pretty much got a good ride. Now people are still under the impression that it might be here either for the long term or it could be here on a temporary basis until uh, the world of David Williams expands into that area. Um, now personally I think, you, I think the world of David Williams will expand into that area at some point but... I think if the dungeon's going to be here for a few years, kind of like what Nemesis of Terror was, that was here for about three, four years uh, before it closed for the Towers of Engare program and used for, Pro for Scarefest's Project 42 from 2018 onwards. Um, I do believe that if it's going to be here for only a few years, make the most of it while you can. Uh, and then maybe Merlin Entertainment might look at introducing a uh, Staffordshire dungeon somewhere else in Staffordshire uh, when the Alton Towers one closes, but it's for the net for now. It seems like if they're gonna keep this one for a good few years, add a few scenes in, um, maybe change some stuff around a bit, 
uh, just to keep it fresh, keep it updated. Uh, the pricing for the dungeon is very good. Um, obviously, £7.50 on the day, £5 online. Uh, that's very good pricing for the dungeons. I think it's uh, well worth the amount that you're getting for it. Um, and overall, it was just a very good attraction and a very good addition uh, for this year. Along with all that, you've got the Family Drop Towers in CBeebies Land, the Peter Rabbit Hibbity Hop. That's a good attraction. I haven't had the pleasure of experiencing that attraction yet. However, it does look like a good family attraction. You've also got some new stargazing pods in the Enchanted Village. They look good as well. You had a new Teletubbies live show in CBeebies Land in the Big Fun Showtime Arena. Again, haven't experienced it. Um, but I have heard some reviews from families that said it's a good show, a great show for families. Uh, so again, another success. The Stargazing Pod's getting a lot of uh, good reviews as well, which is brilliant. So overall for Alton Towers, it's just been an overall great year. Moving on to Thought Park Resort then. 2019 events like no other. They had three events as well as promoting Fright Nights again. Uh, so you also see you had Game FX. Uh, which is in this little white kiosk near the Swarm Plaza. Uh, you have Bouncilla, which is where Walking Dead Do or Die is. And then you've also got Jungle Escape. That's coming back next year, or seems to be coming back next year. That was located in the old I'm a Celebrity Maze site that, of course, used to be home to the Scare Maze, the Asylum at Thought Park Fright Nights. Uh, so, first of all, Game FX. Now, I haven't done these events. I'm very glad Jungle Escape is coming back next year because... Thought Park is a park I wanted to go back to for a couple of years, so um, if I get the chance to go back in the summer or just sometime in next year for Thought Park, I might look at going back at a time when Jungle Escape is there, it's operating, just to get a feel of that experience because I missed out on it uh, this year. But Game FX, first of all, I'm pretty sure that's not coming back just due, due to the fact that It'll just get put into a new location in London because they run Game FX every year. Uh, but they just chose Thought Park this year. At least it made use of the white tent um, near the Swarm Plaza. At least it made use of it. Um, but overall, I think it was just okay. It was a, it was it was good for the teen market. Good to get your Xboxes and your Nintendo Switch and your VRs in. I know a lot of people have been very negative towards it, but I'm looking at this from a positive standpoint. I'm being very professional and very middle of the road here with these experiences. So I know people see the negative side of it. Who wants to play video games at a theme park? But I'm looking at the positive side of it. And overall, I think for that kind of team market that you're aiming for and the family market with the family games, etc., I think it was a decent event to run. Uh, Jungle Escape, it, it was alright and then it sort of got a little bit better towards the end. Uh, I'm sure with a few adjustments here and there, I'm sure it will be an even greater escape room uh, that they'll be able to run. And then Bouncezilla, I think that was the more popular of the three. And the fact that it might not be coming back next year uh, might be a, a negative decision due to the fact that obviously that space won't get used now until Fright Nights with Walking Dead Do or Die. If that comes back next year, which I'm pretty sure it will do. Um, by the way, Thought Park have released their opening dates for next year, so I might do a separate video on that. Um, but basically, uh, Bouncezilla was like a massive bounce, bounce, bouncy castle, basically. Um, and basically, they also had like an extreme version where you do like a massive warm up at the start, and then you got people with water pistols just shooting at you uh, while you're going through the course, so you get wet as well. So that's the more extreme side of it. It was a good summer event for a, for actual a family summer experience. It was good. Um, now it should be interesting to see what they do uh, in terms of initializing 2020. But well, again, we'll follow that sort of teasing and what happens with that. And we'll sort of give you the announcement when the announcement comes out from Thought Park about what they're doing for next year. But overall, in terms of an event, it was a good set of lineups. In terms of new attractions, there wasn't really much to it. Uh, so I'm hoping, and loads of people, loads more people are hoping that Thought Park adds new attractions in the near future. Obviously, I'm sure the next coaster project will be in the next few years. I'm sure that it won't be too long before we wait for our next coaster project at Thought Park. Obviously, uh, by 2022, it will have been 10 years since the last coaster. So I think if they're going to wait that long, I think hopefully, fingers crossed, we get a, a big new project for Thought Park. Moving on to Chessington World of Adventures then, Chessington World of Adventures Resort, and they've got Room on the Broom, A Magical Journey. Now this is a re-theme 
uh, of Hocus Pocus Hall, which is their uh, walkthrough experience, their walkthrough dark ride experience, um, taking place in the old Burn Stub Mansion. Hocus Pocus Hall originally opened in 2003. Uh, and of course, 2019 this year was the transformation into Room on the Broom. Now, Room on the Broom is a Julia Donaldson uh, children's book. Uh, they've worked with that kind of author's books in the past with the Gruffalo River Ride Adventure, replacing Bubbleworks back in 2017. Uh, so they've got a good relationship with that author and the children's books and the license ship with those books. Uh, once it runs out, however, I'm not too sure what's going to happen with the attractions. Will Bubbleworks be returned to Bubbleworks in a brand new format? Will Hocus Pocus Hall come back with a new storyline? Again, we don't know. So we've got to make the most. So we've got to make the most of these sort of license ships when we can, because it's going to be completely different experiences to the original uh, themes and versions. Because uh, I never got the chance to do Hocus Pocus Hall the original, uh, but Room on the Broom: Magical Journey looks a good family attraction. Good uh, effects, good lighting, good projections at the start, uh, good walkthrough experience. Uh, it really takes you on a journey and it really immerses you into the story uh, of Room on the Broom. So overall, it's a decent attraction. Moving on to Legoland Windsor then, a massive new attraction uh, known as Haunted House Monster Party. Uh, now this is of course the walkthrough uh, into Madhouse experience. This is the Vacoma Madhouse um, theme to like a, it's like a light horror Halloween ex uh, theme um, for the experience. Obviously, with this Lord Vampire with his party trick turning the room upside down. Again, another attraction I'm destined to experience in the future. It looks like a pretty good madhouse. Is it on the same level as Hex at Alton Towers? I'm not too sure. Now, this attraction has a very detailed history. Um, back a few years ago, Legoland Windsor applied for planning applications to put in. Ghost, the Haunted House, which was like a ABC Dark Ride drop tower experience, uh, like Nemesis Subterra's ride system at Alton Towers. Uh, however, they decided to withdraw those plans, and we didn't know what was going to happen. They put the plans in again, but this time changed the ride system into a Hex Vacoma Madhouse because it fitted the family audience of the theme park. And of course, 2019, we saw the opening of Haunted House Monster Party, which is the Vacoma Madhouse experience. Uh, so I've heard some good reviews from that attraction. Very good. Uh, so I can't wait to experience it in the future. I'm destined to try and go back to Legoland Windsor at some point in the near future. I might hold off till at least 2021, due to the fact that I'm adding uh, Lego Movie World. Uh, obviously, next year, they've got the new Duplo Dream Coaster uh, going in, which is fantastic. Uh, and it should be pretty interesting to check out. So that's the main new additions then for this year. Uh, obviously there was plenty more sort of smaller flat rides and other new additions as well. Seaside Piers adding new coasters. You look at Clarence Pier in Portsmouth adding two roller coasters. Uh, you got a new flat ride at Great Yarmouth Pleasure Beach and then it was moved over to Fantasy Island. Um, <laughs> at first we thought it was Great Yarmouth and then we had Fantasy Island adding it. So bit of confusion on that part at the start of the year. So you have these smaller additions, but that's sort of the main parks and the main additions. Now you're probably thinking why Poulton's Park isn't mentioned. And I'm going to go on about Poulton's Park in a little bit. And just sort of recap all the new attractions that were announced for next year, this year. That's going to be the next part of this season review. Attractions this year that were announced for the 2020 season and beyond. So one of the big new attractions announced for next year was Flamingo Land Resort. They didn't do much this year in terms of new attractions. They just did little enhancements here and there. However, a big new attraction is coming next year. Like I said, I'm just going to recap these because I'm going to talk about them more uh, in the 2020 attraction analysis for UK theme parks, which will be on online in the new year. So stay tuned for all of that. But this new attraction is a 10 looping roller coaster. Again, I'm really excited about that. Poulton's Park announced Tornado Springs opening in May 2020, uh, which is a brand new area with a new Mac spinning coaster called Storm Tracer, along with well, many new attractions. Again, I'll talk about that more in the analysis video. Alton Towers announced, um, had some fences around House of Monsters, and then announced the world of David Williams. And also Chessington World of Adventures announced two things. Uh, a mini log flume and a rerouted toadies for 2020 and a new drop tower replacing the now closed Ramesses Revenge for 2021. So this season was all about announcing new attractions for next year as well and introducing the 2019 new attractions. Now here on the channel 
we've done plenty of good trips throughout the year. Uh, it's the most trips I've done in a single year. Now, not a, a varied amount of places, like just a, uh, just a couple or a few places and sort of visited more than once. Um, but obviously throughout the years on the channel, we're going to make these trips more varied, more parks to visit, etc. Um, just to sort of vary the trips each year. Uh, but this year was just sort of a start a year, getting used to uh, doing loads of trips every year. Uh, so we started strong with a visit to York Dungeon in January uh, of this year. Uh, York Dungeon was fantastic. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, just a just a just oh just overall a brilliant a, be, a brilliant event um, and a brilliant attraction. Um, obviously, we then I got, well I then got the news that. Uh, they're introducing something new uh, for the spring of this year, so I was invited back in the spring, so I was counting down the days for that. Uh, then, of course, after that, we had a Yorkshire Wildlife Park trip, uh, which was very cool. Um, so, got to see plenty of the animals, got to see some construction on the expansion start, uh, and overall, it was just a very good trip. So that Yorkshire Wildlife trip was in April, but also in April was the Curse of the Witch opening day at York Dungeon. That was a fantastic uh, trip to York Dungeon. Uh, if you haven't seen it, make sure you go and check out the videos from it. Um, the Curse of the Witch opening day, we got to review the new attraction. Uh, we talked to the marketing manager in an exclusive interview. Uh, that's in a separate video as well as the Curse of the Witch vlog. Now the Curse of the Witch opening day vlog has had... Uh, just over 2,000 views, which is unbelievable. So thank you very much, guys, uh, for viewing that video. Make sure you keep viewing that video along with all the others on the channel. Uh, but yeah, that was just a fantastic day. We got uh, some merchandise pants from the Black Jester character. He stayed in character throughout that part of the vlog. Uh, and reviewing the experience itself was fantastic. And it's sort of... That whole new show set me up nicely for what I was set to experience in the Alton Towers Dungeon, which I'll talk about uh, in a little bit. But, um, yeah, that was a, another great trip, along with the Yorkshire Wildlife Park trip to celebrate the Wildest Wizard of Oz event, which was filled with characters, filled with fantastic acting quality, uh, brilliant shows. The actor, Big shout out to the actors and the actresses that were performing on that day at York's Wildlife Park in Donny. It was brilliant. Uh, the acting quality was brilliant. They played the vlog really, really well. Um, Tommy, the juggler, make sure you go follow him on Instagram. He was, he was fun to talk to as well. He's such a nice guy. Um, and overall, both trips in April, just absolutely fantastic and couldn't fault them. So moving into our summer trips, now we had two main summer trips. We had the Yorkshire Wildlife Park trip in August uh, before uh, Safari Nights, which was pretty, pretty cool. But before that, we had a big June trip to the Alton Towers Resort. Now, I do, I do daily, uh, yearly visits to Alton Towers. I visit at least once every year. Um, I think the, I think it was a few years ago or some years ago, right at the start of this decade, uh, that I did it twice in the year because I went to Scarefest as well. I didn't do the mazes, but that was like 2011. It was my first ever ride on air. It was, um, you know, the it was right. It was it was basically around the time when we had like the Boiler House, Carnival of Screams, Terror of the Towers, What Lies Within. You know, it was, it was one of those classic days of Alton Towers that I'll never forget. Uh, but this year, it was just the one visit again, like it has been the past few years. Uh, but my aim in the future for you guys is to do more than one visit on one year, one specific year. You know, it'd be nice to do it next year because, of course, it's the anniversary. Do a, do a summer visit and then a Scarefest visit uh, with it being the anniversary. So, obviously, I'm try I want to try and get out there for the opening weekend of the season as well. If, if the World of David Williams is opening on that day. I will try and get off the opening day of that so I can experience the new attractions in that area. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it on social media, by the way, there's, I think there's like a there's a page that do uh, well. People have done construction updates and they've actually seen through the fence and they've seen like the whole Wobble World building being cleared out. So it looks very interesting to see what kind of new attraction is going to go inside that building. Uh, so that should be interesting to follow. Uh, but one big thing to mention about this trip is, of course, my first ever ride on the Alton Towers Dungeon. Um, and like I said, that was just a completely amazing experience. Couldn't fault it. Just a few blank spots that need clearing up, but apart from that, couldn't fault the experience. Alton Towers has done a fantastic job again with that ride. 
Uh, and again, hope that stays for a good few years until one David Williams springs into life into that area and uh, puts a nice themed dark ride in there. But I think the Alton Towers Dungeon is a good uh, fit for the park, um, either for a few years or until they decide to replace it. Um, but for now, I think the dungeon is a great ride. So moving into Halloween. Now, Halloween on the channel was big, absolutely massive. York Maze Howlo Scream 2019, absolutely fantastic. The new mazes were brilliant. Uh, the Singularity it had some great things. And Barn Again 3D was great, the one from last year. Uh, Corn is Corn Evil, the re-theme of Reincarnation and the expansion of the maze. Again, fantastic. Uh, Flesh Pot was brilliant again. And 2073 was my favourite maze yet again. Um, so overall, just fantastic with that. Um... Along with all that, we had some brilliant experience at York Maze Hallow Tween. We got invited. Uh, ba basically, if you don't know the story, so it was a week before the public launch of the Hallow Tween, the sort of younger version of Hallow Scream event. Um, and what a day that was. What an absolutely fantastic day that was. We got some maze footage. I've released separate videos from that. So make sure you go and check them out. Uh, it's basically separate maze walkthroughs of the Singularity. Corn is Corn Evil and Barn Again 3D. Those were the three mazes uh, open at the Hallow Tween event. Um, maybe next year, because it's the 10th anniversary of Hallow Scream, I might try and get some maze footage uh, inside all the mazes um, for the 10th anniversary of the main Hallow Scream event. So make sure you stay tuned on the channel next year for Halloween uh, if we get some stuff from that. I'm, I'm pretty much going to be attending that event next year probably. Uh, again, looking to do the opening night, fingers crossed, and um, yeah, that's next Halloween, that's a long way away, so we're not going to focus on those plans yet, um, but yeah, Hello Tween 2019 was fantastic, I got to meet some incredible people, uh, big shout out to Emily as well from the Hello Scream event, the, the fan photo that I had, I showed you it in my Hello Scream review, uh, big shout out to Emily, um, hope you're watching this video, uh, but it was great to meet you. Um, from the Hallow Tween event, big shout out to uh, Jeff Hordley who plays Kane Dingle in Emmerdale. It was great to meet you again this year. Um, Recognised me straight away from last year, which was just uh, a dream, personally. Uh, and a big shout out to Morgs, the YouTuber Morgs. Now, I got a lot of people commenting saying they hate his content. Me, personally, I think he's, a, I think he's good at YouTube. Uh, but, as a person, off camera, trust me guys, he is such an amazing guy. Such an amazing guy. Um, so amazing to me. Morgs' mum, his dad, uh, Jensen, his brother, um, and his camera people as well. Everyone from the Morgs filming team was just incredible to meet. Um, they they loved when we did the interview. Uh, funny story, actually, because you guys never saw it, but after we finished the interview, they were surprised that I did it in one take that well, so I was kind of chuffed about that, because uh, this guy's got like 10 million subscribers, which is unbelievable, um, and I'm meeting this guy, and I'm interviewing this guy uh, in my first year as a YouTuber, so, you know, it's, well, first proper year. Obviously, you guys know about the original channel from a couple of years ago, but uh, that was like a temporary thing just to sort of build up confidence in front of camera. And this is the proper one. This is the proper one. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, overall, great to meet Morgs. Fantastic to meet the guy. Uh, and just, just a really just a really lovely day, really. Uh, the mazes were really good. No actors in that one, because uh, it was a younger event, so there's no scare actors in that one. Uh, so you sort of walk through... Um, and basically, that's the, that's the reason why I sort of filmed inside the mazes for that one. Just for the fact that there was no scare acts that can focus on getting the theming right and the camera. So, again, overall, really good events. Can't wait to return to them next year. And there we go. That was the trips. Now, there are two trips that I'm looking at. Not confirmed, but I am looking at them uh, for Christmas time. Uh, there is the Christmas fair at York's Wildlife Park. They have like a massive festive light display um, and some nice Christmas stalls as well. So I'm looking at that. Again, not making any promises because <laughs> I need the time. Um, and there's also another one at Yorkshire Scaregrounds, which is an event that I didn't get to go to at Halloween in Wakefield. However, they're doing a new Christmas, well, not new, but they're doing a Christmas event between the 13th and the 15th of December called Yuletide Terror. So they've got three scare mazes. Uh, Twisted Toy Factory, um, there's like a Santa one, sort of behaving badly and stuff like that, and there's also Krampus, uh, which they were teasing on Facebook recently, so 
Um, that looks good. Obviously, again, not making any promises, but that's an event I am looking at for Christmas time. It's good to have a good scare at Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas, perfect example. Uh, <laughs> but overall, the 2019 season for me has been absolutely bonkers, absolutely mad. I got to meet some fantastic people, Morgs, uh, Jeff, aka Kane Dingle, uh, Pleasure Beach Experience, Tom and Stace, my first fan photo. Um, I'm sure there was a couple of people that I saw at Alton Towers uh, that vlog bombed at some occasions. But overall, I am stoked about this year. It's been one of the best years to start as a YouTuber. And of course, that's the good thing about doing YouTube at the end of a decade. You like This year has been the sort of start of the channel. And then now we're going into the next decade over the next 10 years. I can flourish. You know, you guys have always been commenting down below saying, I deserve more subscribers. You should be one of the biggest YouTubers of theme parks at the minute. Uh, best theme park news channel in the UK. Best theme park news channel in the world. I keep getting loads of positive comments. No negatives. Um, but, you know, it's all been completely positive. So, um, to, to sort of summarise this review of the UK theme park season for 2019, I want to thank you guys, because you guys have been completely interactive, you've always picked me up when I was down, you've always supported through all the news updates, all the reviews, all the videos, all the, uh, any video basically, uh, even the, the Morgs interview, I know a lot of people hated his content, but you all said my content was great. Um, and that's not a dig at Morgs, Morgs is fantastic, but the fact that you guys said my content was great is unbelievable. So, uh, again, big shout out to Morgs, it was great. Uh, but thank you, but all the positive comments I got throughout the year, thank you so, so much, because it means a hell of a lot to me, it means a hell of a lot to my confidence, uh, and it means that I can keep producing great news updates for you guys. Because that's the whole thing about this channel. That's the whole reason for this channel. We are a theme park news channel. The vlogs and the reviews and everything are like the side videos. They're like the, the backup videos to sort of give you more aspects on theme parks. The main USB for this channel is theme park news updates. Um, and it's been brilliant to do that for you this year. And long may it continue. 2020 is going to be a massive year on the channel next year. Absolutely bonkers. Plenty of stuff planned. Um, like I said before, Alton Towers opening weekend, that's something I'm looking at for um, when the opening of the World of David Williams comes about. Obviously, Howler Scream next year, 10th anniversary. Howler Tween will be back, so I'm looking at that. Um, Flamingoland opening a new 10 Looper, looking at that. Obviously, Thought Park, it'd be nice to get back to there at some point. Paltons Park down south, that's a very hard park to get to, like Thorpe Park, but the opening of Tenero Springs, I'll try my absolute best to get down there for the opening day of that new area. Um, plenty of other stuff planned for Halloween, plenty of other stuff planned for the summer, it's going to be a bonkers year, and with 2021 set to include some brand new attractions all around the world, it really is going to be a great year for news updates as well because Theme Park Newsroom has been the main USB for the channel and we're going to get loads of news updates uh, next year. So it's going to be bonkers. I'm going to try my best to keep up with it. I think once uni's finished and sort of we go into the 2022 season, that's going to be like, right, uni's finished, I've done my best. 2022 season, here we go. Uh, well, 2021, technically, because, uh, of course, uh, I finish uni around April, May 2021. So, 2021 season is going to be even bigger because it's like, right, I've done all that. I can focus on this now. Um, so, you know, 2020 season is going to be massive on the channel. We're just going to keep building year upon year upon year. Um, so, I hope you guys are all ready for the ride in the 2020s decade because over the next 10 years, we're going to be flourishing with new videos uh, for you guys so thank you very much for all the support on the 2019 season here's to 2020 uh, thank you very much for watching the UK theme park season review 2019 obviously this video will be back next year for the 2020 review I'm not going to do a preview for next year just for the fact that I'm doing 2020 analysis videos for new rising attractions in the UK in Europe in Asia in the States 
uh, and of course in the rest of the world like Australia etc because uh, they've got some good stuff planned uh, so I hope you guys are ready for those analysis videos coming the new year uh, but for now guys thank you very much make sure you like the video if you've loved it and you want to see more content comment down below your thoughts and theories on the 2019 season what was your favourite attraction of 2019 that's my question of the video what is your favourite attraction of 2019 comment well new attraction comment down below and I'll reply to your comments you know I do thank you very much my name is Coast Shell keep living the coast of life and I'll see you guys in the next video very very soon take care have an awesome day, my friends.